Welcome to Be Verve, an energized program bringing thoughts and information regarding our community's creativity, arts, sciences, education, innovations, and more. I'm your host, Beryl Benbow. So I'm, I'm assuming that this is going out to the entire world. So I'm going to welcome the world uh, to the Fulton Art Fest, the 60th anniversary. Y'all can make a lot of noise when we yeah. say it. Right here in the heart of my beloved Bedford Stuyvesant. You know, oh, that's right. I'm sorry, you said our. I took a little, a little, a little too much ownership. <laughs> our beloved Bedford And uh, this festival has been going on for 60 years. And I'm standing with two gentlemen who are part of the pioneering groups of the Fort North Fair. And, um, I believe that these young men said that they are in their 20s, 124, 128. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they began this, and I think about when I was 24 and 28, what kind of vision I had. And it wasn't the same vision that apparently these gentlemen had. So it, it, it's art and culture for our people has been something that sustained us through some very difficult periods in this country. And the idea that even as we change as a community and they call it evolution, uh, but we call it gentrification, it's important that we keep our art and culture alive. And it's important that it's important that this festival and others like it, like when I look behind me, I see this uh, giant statue of Robert Fulton. And that's here forever. And so it doesn't matter what demographics there are, and now with Google, you can walk through and see a name and Google it and know what that, who he is and what that meant to the community. And today we're here to celebrate three giants, three of the individuals who were responsible for the beginning of the Fulton Park Fair. We're going to unveil just a tiny, a tiny commitment to them and what they meant to this community and what they mean to it in the past, what they mean to it presently, and what they mean to it going forward. We're going to unveil. Uh, this bench. When I got the call from the organizers here at the Fulton Art Fair saying that they wanted to have some memory that was sustained forever, I didn't hesitate in calling the Parks Commission and saying, listen man, I know that y'all, you know, put up statues and, and, and monuments and benches and, and to, to, to heroes. Well, these are some of our heroes culturally and we wanted to make sure that we could sustain that. Um, I'm just supposed to be uh, unveiling this today. But I think standing, it's funny for me to say this, but standing between two giants, <laughs> literally. <laughs> uh, it wasn't that <laughs> Um In Emmett and Otto, I would love to personally, I've, I've had an opportunity to speak to them privately, but I'd like to personally and for the world to hear from their perspective what the thinking was, you know, uh, all of those years and decades ago when that side was a cultural mecca, musically, through art, through entertainment. You know, I don't have to name uh, how many artists and entertainers hail from Bedford Stuyvesant, and even today. Like, so our young people only know about Jay Z and Biggie. But we've had so. <laughs> I had some of my elders say, "Who?" Lena Horn. <laughs> somebody yelled out Lena Horn. Somebody yelled out Stephanie Mills. Somebody yelled out Sarah Vaughan. So we we've had so many. And before we unveil it, you know, in, in my tradition, we always call out the names of our ancestors, those that have gone before us, to pay homage to them. And at some point today, before we do that, I'd love to just have that call and response of our ancestors who've meant so much to the culture and the richness of this community. But before I go any further, um, I personally would like for the world to hear from some of the visionaries on not only this fair and festival, but on art and culture. In, in black communities across the world. Um, and I'm gonna start, uh, they told me uh, to start with Otto, but Otto deferred very quickly to Emmett. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do as I'm told, uh, Brother Emmett. Woo. We can cheer, Brother Emmett. What I'm gonna say is redundant, and that I've said it a thousand times. The Fulton Art Fair was started because those of us who are the elders 
for the most part, never knew that a black audience existed. And we wanted to make sure that the kids in this community would be able to know we were here and there were others that came even before us. We had this park at one time lined up with artists all the way around the park. And to see young brothers and sisters come by and say, wow, I didn't know we could do all of this. One of the sad things with this society is that they understand that the arts, and again I'm saying you have to talk about the arts with an S on it. They understand how it releases creativity in our communities and our children. And they've gone out of their way to make sure that the schools no longer have art programs, no longer have music programs, so that now they can program those same kids the way they want to. All the artists, and I wish you had a chance to pan around to see my brothers and sisters who are here, are dedicated to making sure that our kids, and the world for that matter, gets an opportunity to release their creativity to make the world a better place. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Otto today. Brother Otto is the oldest living member of the Fulton Heart Field. And we all honor him. Shirley Hawkins was a businesswoman. <laughs> and she saw in this community a tremendous amount of talent that she wanted to showcase at South of Fulton Heart Field again. She chose Jacob Lawrence and Henry Fitzgerald to be the co-chairs of the fair. And the fair started in 1958 and attracted artists that was to become a uh, fantastic uh, world-known world artists, well-known artists. Tom Feelings, Vivian Scarlett Key, Bonnie Millard, and, and a host of other artists. Uh, we have uh, in the audience of, uh, the family of one of our fantastic artists, and my brain is Violet, Violet Chandler was a fantastic artist. We unfortunately lost her last year, and we have in the audience uh, some of the family Anyhow, the fair. It's fantastic. The response we got from the community was unbelievable. And we hope, in the 60th year, we hope to be able to continue far into the future with young artists. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Brother Otto. Uh, so, as I said before, um, before we go and make a movement towards the bench, um, in my tradition, we call out our elders we call out those who've gone before us. Now there are so many greats that have hailed from Bedside and Crown Heights. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, that we don't limit it just to artists, um, but those people who, are, who have been great and who have, who this community's show, we built this community on their shoulders. If we could just take a second to call out those names of the ancestors right now. So I'm gonna start with my father, Robert E. Cornegie Sr. Pastor Mount Calvary Baptist Church, 701 Quincy Street. Connie Hawkins. I should have called that Connie too, but. Shirley Hawkins, founder. Shirley Hawkins. Ernie Crisso. Ernie Crisso. Lawrence Dawson. Lawrence Dawson. Carl Jacob Wright. Lawrence. All right, Jacob Lawrence. Leo Cardi. Leo Cardi. Lafayette Robinson. Lafayette Robinson. Floyd Sapp. Lyman Sapp. Floyd Sapp. Floyd Sapp. Floyd Sapp. Matt Bateman. Les Campbell. Les Campbell. Les Campbell. Violet Chandler. Les Campbell. Les Campbell. Better known as G2 Ayusi. Ruby Blake. Ruby Blake. Ruby Blake. Ronnie Gillard. 
Yo, sir. Sonny Carson. Sonny Malaw, Sonny Carson. There's some powerful, powerful people. And our young people have to know what they, what they come from. So the music and, and the internet has them thinking one way about themselves. And so many people have sold into their lives and have created a fabric that we need to keep together. And calling out those names moves me in a particular way because I know that I'm not alone. When I call those names, I know that the struggle uh, was real and is continuing. So I'd like to thank you all for coming out. We're gonna move towards the bench uh, at this time to unveil it and take a great picture in front of it. So let's move. Yo, uh, I must say that y'all look real good in those shirts. As a matter of fact, I need as many of uh, our shirt wearing brothers and sisters to get in this shot. Yo, throw your shirt on the top and get in here. That's uh, what I didn't do while I was still organizing is um, for those of you who don't know, at the New York City Council, I'm the only council member to have an ambassador to arts and culture. And that's because we understood how important it was to be able to create an environment where not only we could protect it, but it could grow. And that's Joe's job. So, uh, those who are here, I'm the ambassador to arts and culture. And apparently, I gave him a small shirt. <laughs> Sit in the middle. Oh. oh, that looks good. How that, how that look to you? It looked great to me. It's going out to the rest of the world. Um, so on three, we're going to call out the names of the founders that are on this bench. And, and I got to let you know, there's not a ton of these benches in the city. It's not a ton. So we are as we do it as I always, of uh, setting a precedent for honoring our folks in the way that we should be honored. So another tradition I have, unfortunately, uh, one last tradition, and that is a prayer. And while we called on our ancestors and we called out those names, um, while I am a preacher's kid, I was not allowed in the pulpit, and we'll talk about reasons why later. <laughs> so if I do have someone who is um, skilled in the ability to pray, if I can just pray on behalf of our ancestors, on behalf of the brothers and sisters who are responsible for this today. Will everybody raise their hand at one time? We need one prayer walk. Hello, good, e good afternoon. We're here at the Fulton Art Fair, the 60th year, celebrating the legacy that is left for us to continue in the future. This legacy continues today and into the future. We want to thank the Lord for this day. June the 16, 2018, that came before us, before time passed. Okay, this is a legacy moment for Bedford Styles history. Artists that came before and now continue with us. The founders, our ancestors that we have named previously, and the artists that are here now that will continue the legacy of the Fulton Art Fair that will continue in the future. And I want to thank everyone that's here to this legacy here today in Bedford Style Park 2018. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to count back from five. And then we're going to ask the brothers just to pull forward and unveil the names of Shirley Hawkins, Jacob Lawrence, and Ernest, Ernest Crichlow. Five, four, three, two, one. Forward. So, anyone who sits on that bench, 
person has a smartphone will Google those names and understand what their commitment was to this community and hopefully be inspired to carry a commitment and a legacy going forward. And what I would ask of the organizers of the Fulton Art Fair is grab up some of these young folks, tutor them, mentor them, which I know you do already. Um, we're going to ask for next year to have a small little section just for our young artists who can come and sit at your feet and understand the intersection between arts and culture and politics and how important it is that, that they can't do one without the other, that they have to be together. And while we're in this climate, in this very difficult climate of politics and of trying to make America great again, we're going to make Ben Stock great again. Can we it to that? So again, I want to I thank you. I see that the band has set up. Uh, we're going to enjoy this wonderful weekend and this beautiful weather. We're going to send a message to the rest of the world about what Memphis Stuyvesant is really about. And it's about protecting its arts and its culture. Well, I just want you to know I have three and a half years left as your council person uh, because of term limits. But we've committed to, over the next four years, erecting statues on behalf of our community. And the first one will be done in the fall in Broward Park. We'll be erecting a statue of um, Shirley Chisholm. Thank you for tuning in to Be Verve, an edutainment program. Be Verve is aired the third Monday of every month at 10.30 p.m. Thank you again and hope to see you soon. It's what rap became, man. It's what rap is, man. Pop for